The idea of Sunday being a day of rest isn't really the norm anymore. A lot of the things that can be done during the week can be done on a Sunday as well. Yet, there are still lots of churches using initiative and imagination to invite people into church in this 24-7 world. And this week, I'll be finding out about some of those initiatives and also meeting some of the people who've accepted that invitation. This week, the newest Methodist church in the country. I meet the man running one of the biggest initiatives for getting people into church. How a summer festival inspired a fresh expression of church and lively praise and worship songs from around the UK. Later on, we'll be marking International Day of Peace with a special prayer from the newly appointed Archbishop and Bishop of Liverpool. And the Bishop of Liverpool is also leading a new church initiative beginning this month, the Season of Invitation, when Christians invite their friends to church. Ten years ago, we had this simple idea called Back to Church Sunday, where church people were asked to invite someone they know to something they love and many tens of thousands of people have invited their friends. We've moved that on now and we call it the season of invitation, a season of five occasions. End of September, back to church Sunday. Harvest, October, Remembrance, November. Christmas starts December and Christmas Day. And research shows us that if people are invited a number of times, there's more chance that they'll stick with the church, make friends there, and maybe find out more for themselves what it's all about. I came here through a friend who I used to go to church with when I was small um, and I've stayed because I've been made to feel so welcome and involved in everything the church does. I came to church because my wife started coming and when I came I wanted to learn more and I've stayed because it's helped me to, to live a better life and be a better person. We came to church to baptise our youngest child and we never left. And that was 32 years ago and this it really is our home. Well, whether you're walking into church for the first or the 1,000th time, the redemption and welcome that's at the heart of Christianity is open to everybody. And that just happens to be the theme of tonight's first hymn, a modern version of the 1904 Welsh Revival hymn, Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean. In Warrington Town Centre, the members of one congregation have stumbled on a friendly way to invite newcomers. 
the promise of coffee, cake and choruses. Five and a half years ago, a group of people met together with the premise of wanting to go to a local coffee shop to start a church there. That began a brand new church community, which is now known as New Song Network Church. What we didn't expect was for it to grow so quickly that so many people who had been unchurched or de-churched, those that had walked away from church to come back, we now have 190 people meeting for worship and a brand new church community was born, the newest Methodist church in the country. We are New Song Church. Until six months ago, new member Jill Clayton hadn't been to a church since childhood. I always felt there was something missing, that there was more to life than striving for the bigger house, the bigger car. But ne nothing ever fit the bill, nothing ever felt that I could say to myself, whew, you've made it. I was despondent. I felt, this is it. This is all there is to life. Jill tried reading the Bible and soon afterwards had an unexpected experience early one Sunday morning. I was woken and there was a voice very clearly saying to me, get up, get up and go to church. And uh, so I got ready and I went. Jill was made welcome by Jackie, the minister, who invited her to the next service of New Song Church. I wouldn't have gone if she hadn't have made such a personal invitation. So important, that, that greeting, that sense of belonging. Come on in, you're home. God met me in the people that I met at New Song, in the people who drew alongside me that night. God met me there. the most well-known initiative bringing new people into church is the Alpha Course. And this is Holy Trinity Brompton where it started 25 years ago. It's a course that many people have been to, including me, and I've come today to meet the man who's responsible for it. 
Jesus was tempted in every way, just like us. The Reverend Nicky Gumbel has been responsible for Alpha since the late 1980s and has seen it grow from a small Bible study group to an international operation in 169 countries and 70,000 churches. Alpha is an introduction to Christianity. It's designed for people who wouldn't normally go to church. And it's a way they can explore that in, in a really relaxed, unpressurized environment. Nothing is off limits. No question is too difficult. No question is too hostile. No question is too simple. Everybody can bring their questions. And that's what they do. The people come with their questions. Why does God allow suffering? What about other religions? How can you trust the Bible? Isn't it full of contradiction? And then we discuss together. And most people come because a friend invited them or a member of their family invited them along. How important is it to have that personal invitation? We, on average, we have about a thousand people who come on the course here. And they have all got lots of friends. So when they finish the course, they say to their friends, that was, I had a great time. Why do you think something that basically started in a central London dinner party. Why do you think that's had such uh, traction? Why it's affected so many people throughout the globe? I, th I think it, it works because ultimately it's about Jesus. It's not about Alpha. If it was about Alpha, it wouldn't work anywhere. But it's about Jesus. And I think the gospel is the same everywhere. Is Alpha the only way people can find God? I didn't go on enough, of course. I met, I met Jesus through reading the New Testament. There are many, many different ways that people can encounter Jesus. And we run Alpha here because we haven't found a better way. If we find a better way, we'll drop Alpha and run the better way. Lots of things have changed over the years because things that people found really easy a few years ago, they find really hard now. We used to have the talk on the Bible before the one on prayer because people didn't find the Bible hard 25 years ago. There was a sort of respect for the Bible. Now that's completely gone. Prayer, people used to think, oh, prayer, that's really boring, that's church. Now, most people are interested in prayer. It's kind of like, it's, it's almost a, a trendy thing to do, to pray. The Holy Spirit. People used to be, that, that used to be really hard for people, the idea of an experience of the Holy Spirit. Now people are very open to experience. Looking back over these nearly 25 years, what would you say you're most thankful for in regard of how Alpha's helped the church to grow? Well, it's had a huge impact on our own church. We've had literally thousands and thousands of people who have come to faith on Alpha and have joined the church. And then I've watched that in so many churches around the world, Catholic churches, Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Salvation Army, Pentecostal, uh, and that's an amazing thing, to see all the variety. I've, I've been enriched by my experience of all those different churches, and I've learned so much from them. It's just been a wonderful adventure. But what makes me most thankful about Alpha is watching people's lives being transformed by Jesus Christ.